Well, hi everyone. My name is Josh Erickson, and I have the pleasure of being one of the pastors of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. And I am excited to welcome you to this worship service, no matter when you might be watching it. We're so glad that you have decided to join us, but we want to say a special welcome to anybody who might be new or newer to Park Ridge Presbyterian. Hey, if you are or new or newer, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me an email at josh at parkridgepresby.org uh, to get connected with me. Or you can go to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash connected to find out more about some next steps that you can take to get better connected to Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. Hey, as I mentioned last week, we're excited to welcome back Pastor Amanda from her maternity leave. She will be working part-time through most of September uh, and getting into full-time then later on this month. We are excited to welcome her back. Well, today's service will include the continuation of our message series, No One Told You Life Was Gonna Be This Way. We'll have some time of prayer. Uh, we'll have some special music as well. And if you are watching this on Sunday morning, September 20th, we do hope that you will join us for our digital coffee hour, which is hosted at 11 a.m. on Zoom. The information for that gathering was sent out via our Sunday morning email. We really do hope that this service is a blessing to you whenever you might be watching it. Pastor Amanda with a special message for our PRPC kids. Guys, have you ever heard someone say you woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Have you ever heard someone say that? When we say that to people, we're saying you seem a little cranky. Have you ever felt that way? Like, like everything is not going your way today and that basically ever since you set foot on the floor ever since you got up, you woke up and things were not going your way. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. And when I feel like that, everything just makes me go, oh. Have you ever felt that way? Everybody, make your best face. Do it right now. That's some good growling. But you know what? When we make that grr face, if we do it long enough, it'll hurt you. And you know what, if we don't do anything about that yucky, growly, grr feeling, we might hurt other people. So to change your grr attitude to a great attitude, you know what you need? You need gratitude. To change your grr attitude to a great attitude, you need gratitude. Because you know what, our brains actually do something amazing when we stop thinking about the things that make us go grr and start thinking about the things that we love, the things that make us happy, the things that we think are great. That, that signals in our brain to send these good vibes throughout our body and then we're not feeling that growly feeling anymore. We're feeling joy and happiness because we know we have things to be thankful for. So I think what we all need, whether we woke up on the wrong side of the bed or not, is to remember gratitude, to remember that whenever we have that grr feeling, what we can do to change our day around is to think of the things that we're grateful for, to practice gratitude. So do this with me, make that grr face again like this. Now keep your eyes closed, but think about the things that you're thankful for. Think about things like ice cream on a really hot day. 
Think about things like laughing until your belly hurts. Think of your best friends. I bet you started to smile. I bet when you think about the things that are great, that growly feeling, that grr face, it softens and you start to smile. When we take those grr feelings and add gratitude, we end up with a greater attitude than we started with. Psalm 9-1 says, I will give thanks with my whole heart. God wants us to live lives full of gratitude and thankfulness. And, and our brains are wired. We're wired. We are created to start feeling better when we start being thankful. So the next time you feel like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, turn that grr attitude into a great attitude by starting to practice a little gratitude. I bet you'll feel a whole lot better. Well, the small hits and the big hits keep coming. I don't know about you, but I'm guessing you've had some small or some uh, normal sort of hits that life has thrown at you over the past few months. Like on a personal note, like I can share, for example, that my mom recently um, had a third ablation on her heart for some atrial fibrillation. Uh, on top of that, she had a, a large branch fall on her house uh, during those storms back in August that caused some serious damage. Uh, she's a renter, but still, that's like a really serious thing that happens. I share those because, uh, well, those are just kind of some of the normal challenges and the normal hits we have in life. Uh, but then this season and this year, 2020, keeps throwing some bigger hits at us as well. And uh, over this past weekend, we've been experiencing the aftermath of what is another big hit, uh, the loss of an iconic American. Of course, I'm referring to the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I know you're mature enough, independent of your political uh, persuasions or thoughts about her, that you're all mature, <laughs> we're all mature enough to understand that she was an iconic person uh, in our country. And based on the copious and very significant notes that I'm reading and seeing on social media from a wide range of our church members uh, and our extended network, I know that her passing has caused uh, a lot of grief for many people. So if you are experiencing grief around that, please know that I am seeing your grief and understanding some of that. I will admit that as a person of privilege and, and power that I cannot quite empathize with the depth of some of the things that people are posting, um, but I do see them and understand and see the pain people are expressing. Now, Justice Ginsburg wasn't the only one we've lost over these past few months that are, uh, have been iconic. Uh, people like Chadwick Boseman and John Lewis and Kobe Bryant all come to mind. And the reality is we know their names uh, but uh, we don't know all the names of the people that have been lost over this past year. We think about the nearly 200,000 people that have passed from COVID or the growing close to a million that have passed globally. We don't know all their names, but those are huge losses as well. Now, the reality is, is that we continue on in this time. We have to figure out how we can continue to make our way forward. And really, no one told us that life was going to be this way. And in fact, actually, life really isn't normally this way, is it? Normally, for many of us, life has a way of having hard moments, uh, but those seasons tend to come and go, and then we're able to catch our breath because there aren't quite as many back-to-back -back struggles or crises. But right now, we're dealing with multiple international-type crises, we're dealing with multiple his history-making crises, and we're dealing with still the normal challenges, the normal ups and downs that life brings. So I know we're going to get through this, and I know we're going to make it to the other side, but I want to make sure that we do this in a way where we're not crashing and burning along the way, where we're not running on empty, where we're not running on fumes, 
Because God doesn't want us to just simply falter our way through all of this. God doesn't want us to burn out. God wants us to make it through so that we can survive and thrive. And if we're going to make our way through this, we're going to have to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves because we have to be able to refuel and recharge. It might be that in ordinary circumstances, we can kind of find our way through this, sort of with life's ebbs and flows. But in these circumstances, we need to make sure that we are taking extra care to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Now, when you hear that, I, that word or that term of self-care, many, many things might come to mind. And there are some forms of self-care that can really become quite self-indulgent or self-aggrandizing. But the kind of self-care that God wants for us is self-care that takes seriously who we are and who we're becoming, not just to take care of ourselves, but so that we can take care of other people. It's self-care in the name of service of others. And I know that you have people who are counting on you. And I know that I have people who are counting on me. And they're counting on you. They're counting on me to make sure that we don't crash and burn. To make sure that we don't burn out. Because if we crash and burn or if we burn out, then we aren't going to be able to be there for the people that are counting on us in our lives. Now, this reality of needing to take care of ourselves isn't something that just happens to us in this day and age. And in fact, actually, it's something that seemingly Jesus actually was a part of doing, that Jesus took time for himself. Actually, in many instances, there are places in the Gospels, the stories of Jesus, where, where Jesus would leave his disciples, would leave the crowds, and he'd go off on his own into the mountains. He, he would take Sabbath. He would take the day of rest. He would pray. He would do these things. He was taking care of himself. There are other places, specifically I think of the experience that Peter had. One of his most pivotal experiences was a dream that he had when he had gone on the roof of where he was on his own to pray, taking care of himself. Now, we can't always look at the actions in, in, of the biblical people and then draw direct correlations to what we're supposed to do. But in this instance, I think we can get a whole lot closer. We can see the value of taking care of ourselves, not to be self-indulgent, but so that we can be there for other people. Because that's what God wants for us, is God wants us to make it through the season, but God also wants us to be there for other people. Because just like no one told you that life was going to be this way, no one told them either that life was going to be this way. So how is it that we can better take care of ourselves in a time like this? And how is it that we can find our way through? Well, some of self-care begins with just recognizing simply that we are holistic and complex people. That we have elements of health that are fourfold. That we have physical health, we have emotional health, we have spiritual health, and we have mental health. And they're all interconnected because we're integrated human beings. But if we can look to improving in one of those areas, we can trust that it'll lift us in the other areas. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into any one of those because they're all interconnected. But there is one that I want to make sure I stop on for just a moment here. And that's that matter of mental and, and really emotional health. This has been a very hard season for many of us. And, and for many people, we can simply stop and we can pause and we can find our way forward to improve our mental health through normal activities and normal behaviors. But there are many people also who are finding this season to be a real challenge for their mental, their psychological health. And if you find yourself struggling, for instance, in this season with depression, Maybe you haven't before, or, or maybe you're having suicidal or self-harm thoughts. Please get help. If you know a psychologist or a counselor, make an appointment. If you don't have a mental health professional in your life, let me know, and I will help you find one. I'm not a mental health professional, but I know many of them, and they are willing to help you. This season, this time has been very difficult. So really, if you're struggling with your mental health like you've not struggled before, don't be shy to ask for help, and we're here to help you. Now, so being aware of all of this makes us understand better and how important it is uh, to understand that we are uh, creative, holistic 
people that need help in all those kinds of areas. Now, understanding that we need self-care and understanding that it's a complex thing because we're complex people is a part of the situation. But like a lot of things, just describing the situation or describing that there's a problem or knowing that there's a problem um, is only half the battle. How many times have we found ourselves in a situation, though, where we've described the problem uh, and we're like, oh, that seems like we've done something? Well, describing the problem or knowing there's an issue is only half the battle. The other half is actually doing something about it. And so I want to give you what I'm going to call the three P's uh, that might be able to help you at this time. And the three P's are to plan, to make progress, and to have a partner. Plan, progress, and partner. Now knowing that we need a plan for these things is important because making a plan is one of the ways that we can actually make progress then. So what is it to make a plan for self-care? Well, one of the things you could do to sort of identify this, if you haven't given it much thought before, is to make, take some time to write out some answers to these questions. Uh, what has been giving you stress lately? Well, that might be a very long list, but write it out because uh, you may be able to avoid some of those things or, or mitigate some of those things. Uh, what are some things that have been giving you joy? Uh, what are some things that have been exciting to you? Uh, what are the challenges that you've been facing? Uh, and if you can write those things out and you can write it out on a piece of paper, you could open up a note on your phone, you could do a new document on your computer, whatever it is for you, uh, then you can identify some of the places where you are able to make plans to live into the things that are helping you, uh, and then also to have, perhaps avoid the things that are, that are harming you. Then you can go forward with a plan in mind on how to pursue these things. So that's the first thing, is to make a plan. The second thing when it comes to this is, is to commit to making progress, but realize it isn't about perfection. That's one of the things about self-care in a situation like this. It's not about getting to this perfect place where things are perfect all the time. First off, that's not how life works, and we know that. But it, and also, especially in this year, it's not going to work like that. But the goal is to make progress, because the goal of self-care in the service of others is to make, have just enough margin, as it were, to be able to roll through or survive the next challenge that comes your way. It isn't to get to this state of, you know, perfection or holiness or balance where it's, you know, you feel like you've got it all under control. It's just about finding enough margin to make it through the next challenge that you face. And that's also about progress, not perfection. God is the only one who is perfect. Jesus was perfect as well, but you know how that worked. And the reality is we want to make progress so we can make it forward. We can make it forward through these circumstances. And then the last piece here is, is to find a partner to ha or to get a partner and then not forget about your partner. And that kind of comes in, in twofold form. One of the things that can help us when we are pursuing self-care is to have some accountability in that. And so we want to think about inviting someone to be a partner and encouraging us or ho holding us accountable to those aspects of self-care. Asking a friend, a coworker, a family member um, into that uh, would be an honor for many people. Simply saying to them, hey, here's what I'm going to be working on so I can take care of myself better. Would you be willing to ask me about that uh, so I have a sense of accountability? Uh, they'll likely do that. I have family members that do that for me. And it's super important. So having a partner that's going to ask you about it and, and hold you accountable is, is important as well. But then there's another kind of partner in all of this and in, in many cases in life that I want to make sure that we don't forget about as well. And I want to take a moment to talk to um, all those people who are in committed relationships uh, and the married folk. And for just a moment, I want to I wanna ask you to, to uh, not forget your partner. Uh, if you're married, uh, to not forget your spouse. And here, here's what I mean by that. Um, we need to make sure that we are helping our spouses take care of themselves. Now that might sound a little odd, but um, it might mean, especially if you've got kids, that, that you as one spouse needs to make sure that you are helping your other spouse find room for and time for self-care. 
Specifically, if you've got kids at home and maybe you're all uh, working from home and doing school at home, uh, maybe make sure that your spouse has at least one time a week where they are alone without the kids. Um, I don't always get this right. I will tell you that. Just ask my wife. Um, But I'm trying to make sure that she has some kind of time where she's alone or she's able to do what she needs to do without kids interrupting her. Uh, Because I'm, I'm mindful of the stress and the challenges that come from trying to make it through this year. Um, so invite a partner to help you. And if you're, if you're married or committed to someone, uh, make sure that you, you don't forget about helping your partner find some time and some margin for self-care. So make a plan. Commit to progress, not perfection. And get a partner and, and don't forget your partner. Getting through this season and these challenges is difficult. Uh, Making sure that we are taking care of ourselves along the way is really important. We really want to make sure that we are refueling ourselves, that we're recharging ourselves so that we can make it through and not crash and burn along the way. God doesn't want us to simply just make it to the end of all this. God wants us to survive and God wants us to thrive in this season as well. So let's make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, not in the name of being self-indulgent, but in in the name of serving one another.
thank you for being so generous. Thank you for being generous with your resources that as we bring all of our resources together, we're able to do further what God has called us to do. For those of you who have given financially to our church, I am so grateful. For those who intend to give or will give, I am grateful for that too. And on behalf of all of the leadership, I want to say thank you to everybody for your generosity at this time. We truly believe that everybody is giving as best that they can at this time, and we thank you for what you're able to do. We, knew, we know some can do much and some can do not as much as they'd like at this time. But God honors the gifts of all size because God honors the spirit in which we give. So it's in the spirit of giving that I would like to offer a prayer at this time. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for being a God of great generosity. We thank you for the generous gift of your grace and your love. And we thank you for the ways in which your grace and love inspire us to do your work in this world. Holy God, as we seek to use the generous gifts of resources that you have blessed us with to further your work in this world, we ask that you help us to do so faithfully. We ask that you help us to see the ways in which you have called us to respond to the needs of this world at this time and always. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings you have poured out onto us. And indeed, we thank you for the inspiration you give to us to share those blessings with others. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful for the gift of your love and the gift of your peace. And we are mindful for the ways in which your Holy Spirit is present among us. And whether together or apart, you still bind us together as your people. God, as we experience your love, help us to be more loving to other people. As we experience your peace, help us to be more peaceful in our interactions with one another. And Holy God, in this time, we do ask also that you help us to have the right kinds of self-care present in our lives. We ask that you help us to do so in a way that is in seeking to be of service to others. Holy God, we're mindful indeed of the ways in which the world is in need of servants. We see the places where there is brokenness, and we praise you for helping us see that. Gracious God, we think of those who have found themselves in harm's way in these days. Out west with the wildfires, in the south with the hurricanes, in the Midwest with the storms of August, God, with COVID around the globe, with economic hardships, with employment hardships, with people experiencing the impact of racism. God, all of these things point to our need for your grace and our need to pursue service of others. Help us to be faithful as we seek to do the work you have set before us. Holy God, we also lift up to you, our church family, at this time as well. We pray for those who continue to find themselves struggling and find themselves in medical recoveries. We pray for those who have recently had injuries and are in recovery. We pray for those who find themselves struggling with mental issues at this time as well. And Holy God, we ask that you continue to hear these prayers, and we know that you do, and we appreciate deeply how much you listen to us and how much you value our prayers. And we also say thank you, God, for the prayer that Jesus taught us that we now say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, thanks again for joining us for this worship service whenever you might be watching it. Again, if you are watching this on Sunday morning, September 20th, we do hope that you will join us for the 11 a.m. digital coffee hour on Zoom. That information was sent out with the Sunday morning email. And whether you're watching this on a Sunday morning or whenever you might be watching it, we do ask that you now receive this blessing. It's our prayer that the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, with all those whom you love and all those who feel no love. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.